Sometimes I notice when I read novels today or books today, something very interesting is happening with novels and books. They actually tell you more or less how the book is going to begin, how, how the book is going to end at the beginning of the story. Isn't that interesting? Books that are written that give you the clue to how the story is going to end at the very beginning. One of the reasons I print the text to my sermons in the bulletin all the time is so people can really focus on that subject. Words that can save us, words that save us. And I want to let you know at the very outset what I'm trying to achieve. You see that passage I read from John chapter six, where some of the disciples were going to leave Jesus and they say they didn't understand all this focus, focus stuff he was talking about. He was saying a lot of, what we say, enigmatic kind of curious things. And some of the disciples went, and he asked the rest of the disciples, I assume Peter and John and the faithful 12, what are you going to do? Are you going to leave too? And they said, where are we going? You have the words that lead to eternal life. In other words, you have the words that can save us. Isn't that a curious thing? Words that save us. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And that's why I gave you those pencils and the little cards. I want you to be really concentrated in writing some of these texts down as we go along. Because these words can literally save you. Literally save your life. Words have immense, unbelievable, even awesome power. Words can either kill us or cripple us or heal us. Words can inspire hope and love or they can generate unimaginable misery and pain, even death. People have been killed by words someone told them. A wrong word said at the wrong time can forever injure and hurt. There are people who say, I remember when someone told me something when I was a couple years old and I never forgot it. It never came out of my mind. Or the right word said at the right time can forever inspire and lift us up to immense confidence and great heights. Word, words have been known to pitch a person into the depths of despair or they have the power to deliver from the pit of hell. If each one of us was to reflect on the words you said to somebody or the words said to you, and depending on the circumstances they were said, you know you'll never forget it. If, if I were to ask each person here today to tell me something that you heard someone say or someone said to you, everybody would get up here and they, they would remember exactly what it was. If I was to do that right now. So words can save us or words can kill us, depending on the approach we take. For instance, boy, you just like your pa. You ain't no good. You can turn out just like him. It's very hard to forget something like that. Or, gal, you just like your ma. You, you ain't coming to anything. Or conversely, man, I see real potential in you, young Johnson who conducted the service this morning. Young Johnson, I see real potential. You man, keep it up. Yes. You ain't gonna forget that, and I mean that. And the young people too. Keep it up. Keep up your good work. Or young lady, hang on in there. You're definitely on the right path. I like what I see in you. If a teacher says this, or the right person at the right time, you know we never forgot it. Never forgot it. So words can kill us or save us, literally. It can decide what direction in life we go. Now I want to say something very important here. In the Bible, in Bible language, the word of the Lord, even the words of the Lord, wherever we see word, whether it's a big W or a small W, is synonymous with the voice of the Lord. So when we talk about the word of the Lord, I want you to put almost a slash and say, that's the voice of God. 
The word of God is like the voice of God. In the beginning, the first lines in the Old Testament in the Bible, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You know? the, the word there is like voice, something that's very alive. So word is not just like uh, a written word. It's not even more than a spoken word. It, it's it's, it's a something that really has immense power behind it. And the word of the Lord is even more important than the human word. God's word is even more important than the words you hear coming out of my mouth. Now, and I'm saying a kind of words that I claim to speak on behalf of God, but unless you hear God behind it, it is not going to go anywhere. You can say, oh, that's Colin Archer talking up there. I know him, I, you know, he born right up there, he's a founder church, so you won't pay any mind. So sometimes people can say some words that are very ordinary and very, and like, like it hits you out of the blue. It's like, boy, I heard God's voice today. But to hear that word of, of the Lord, to obey that verse, you have to have, you have to cultivate the right kind of hearing, a listening ear. Take, for example, the boy Samuel. In the book of 1 Samuel that was read a while ago, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord on the Eli, we read in 1 Samuel 3.1. In those days, there's a very curious thing that comes up here. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Well, I guess you can say in, in those days, like people didn't hear the voice of the Lord very much. Maybe you can say in the Bahamas today, boy, people ain't hearing the voice of the Lord because they're killing and doing all kinds of things. They ain't checking for God's word. They're not listening to God's voice. They're listening to something else because they don't, they don't seem to be checking for God's word. So maybe we can say in the Bahamas today, the word of the Lord is very rare, although it's being preached all around the place. And again in 1 Samuel 3, 7, quote, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Maybe that's another way of saying he wasn't listening. The word know in the Bible is the same word they use for sexual intimacy. K-N-O-W. That's, that's one of the most powerful words in the whole Bible. No, K-N-O-W. Wherever you see that word, it's a very special word. It means someone who know you so close. As, as if you are married to that person. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. 1 Samuel 3, 7. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. He didn't hear it yet. The voice of the Lord didn't come to him yet. Maybe he was hearing it all around the place, but somehow he just wasn't cultivating the listening ear. And yet later, when that word or voice of the Lord was revealed to Samuel in 1 Samuel 3, 10, when it was finally revealed, he said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Now I'm really tuning in. I'm hearing your voice. I'm hearing your word. I'll just say that again so I can pick this up right. When God's word or God's voice came to the young Israelite Samuel for the first time, he didn't realize who was calling. Even after the word or the voice or the call was repeated, Samuel still didn't get the message. But when Eli, the priest, realized what was happening, he said, you know, you, that's not me you're hearing. You're hearing God's voice. And Samuel said, oh, I, this, this is a different voice I'm hearing. Eli told me to listen to something else. And so he started tuning in. And he got the message. 